All right, let's get into a bit of a tougher conversation here, moving on from these top guys. Uh, let's talk about Lamar Jackson specifically. He was the number one quarterback and league MVP in 2019 and then fell to quarterback number 10 in 2020. What Lamar Jackson will we get this year? Top we 10? get somewhere like top in between 10. there, maybe like six, seven range. I think closer I to know. 10, though. Somewhere yeah, in the middle, but I think closer 10. to 10. I think 10. Yeah. I, he's going to be on the lower end of the top 10. I think we're going to be closer to last season's production compared to MVP Lamar Jackson. He did get a lot of res- or a lot, a lot more receiving help than Bateman and Sammy Watkins, but you got like Tom Brady, Ryan Tannehill, Justin Herbert, all of more weapons. I'm taking all those guys possibly over Lamar Jackson. What about the rushing ability, though? They got J.K. Dobbins. Yeah, I'm taking yeah. Lamar a well over a lot of the guys Q's mentioning. I think I'm on the opposite side of all you guys here. I have Lamar ranked at four. God. I think Lamar is a top five quarterback again this year without a what question. What year are you in? Um, 2020. Lamar had, <laughs> I think, only like 20 points less than top five last year. Um, and he would have been a top three quarterback in every season for the last five years besides last season. Last season was a quarterback anomaly. I've mentioned that multiple times. Lamar has obviously still has the talent. He had a little bit of a like a struggle throughout like parts of last season where he struggled a little bit, but we've seen Lamar Jackson play high caliber football um, time and time again. He still has probably the best rushing ability out of any quarterback. And I think the offense got a little bit better this year with some of the pieces they added with Rashad Bateman. Sammy Watkins isn't much of an upgrade, but like he was thrown to like Willie Sneed last year. He still has Mark Andrews another year with Hollywood Brown, who's going to be taking the top off of defenses. <laughs> well, I still think Lamar Jackson is easily going to be the whole heart of this offense. So he's top five for me. I know it comes with running the ball, but he's like <laughs> also having a bad fumble issue. Well, he had 12 rookie year, nine last year, nine the second year, and then 10 last year. And I, uh, I mean, he only it's lost come four with... last year, though, I think. Yeah, well, 10. That's um, minus eight points. I'll take that. And his sacks have gone up. Josh I don't Allen know what fumbled more last that. year and lost points. I don't know what I'm getting at here. I just, I'm just trying to find anything to hate on Lamar, I guess, to keep him down towards the 10 quarterback. I don't think he's going to – I wouldn't rank him after 10, but 10 at least. Or 10 yeah. the farthest down. I think he I had to come back down to earth a little bit after such a high MVP season. So I have him at four, not number one. Again, I don't think he's going to be MVP, but I think last year with 26 passing touchdowns after 36 and uh, 2019, I think I think he gets somewhere more in the middle here in his third season, um, as well as his rushing ability. He had 1,000 rushing yards on 150 carries. I don't see any of those carries going anywhere. Mark Ingram's gone. So that's more rushing opportunities for Lamar to take over as well. All right. You're swaying I me. Like me some Lamar Jackson this year a lot. But if you can get him where closer to 10, you might get a steal on Lamar Jackson. Uh, moving on to another tough quarterback to rank this year, Dak Prescott. What are your thoughts on Dak? And are you worried at all about that injury from last year still? T Gods, we'll let you start this one off. Big Dak guy. Well, first off, he's not hard for me to rank. I know exactly where I want him, and I, I have him at five. Um I think he's great. I'm not worried about the injury from last year, but I'm worried about the injury from this year. Yes. Which is his underneath Shoulder, here. I think, yeah, yeah, it's like under here. Um, that's a little concerning, but you know, if it all plays out and he's healthy, then easy top five. I mean, he's got great weapons. Um, there's just there's nothing to not like. I'll get I'll get into the specifics specifics later, but just know top five. Yeah, and that defense doesn't really improve much. So those first, like, five or six weeks when he was playing last year, he was down because they would score 40, and then he'd just have to – he'd just pad the stats. And um, maybe in real life he's not the best QB, but in fantasy that's all you need sometimes. Yeah, Dak was insane last year. On a points-per-game basis, he was the best quarterback last year, and it wasn't close when he was actually healthy. So I'm with, kind of with T-Gods here. I don't have him at five. I have him one lower at six. Um Obviously, I have Lamar in my top five. I think that's the difference there. But Dak Prescott is definitely going to be a solid quarterback this year. Someone I would target in the middle rounds, no doubt. Yeah. 
I have him at five. If he's 100, percent we'll see the same same stuff we saw last year. Yeah, or 90. I agree. Go ahead, I, Matt. Say something. Matt's I'm waiting. Now I'm holding. Old. Old. <laughs> he's holding his stick in. Matt's definitely going to talk about that in a little bit as well. Um, the next take we have here, we had a surprise visit from Ryan on the podcast. <laughs> Get out of here. Anyways. I didn't um, even get to see Sean. You froze like <laughs> 10 minutes ago, bro. <laughs> on yours or on everybody's? On mine. Matt's no, you're not frozen for me. Matt's scaring me out here, man. Thinking the whole podcast, I'm like a zombie. Uh-huh. All right, anyways. Moving on to the next quarterback, Russell Wilson has fallen just a bit from being a must-grab top five guy in some rankings. Uh, but do any of you have, still have him inside your top five, and what are your concerns this year with Russ? I have him at six. I don't think there's many concerns because they've got a new offensive coordinator. You just hope that the whole situation last year with like defenses figuring them out doesn't repeat because then that would be a huge concern. Uh, they did upgrade the offensive line slightly. Very um, slightly. <laughs> but yeah, very slightly, but upgrades and upgrade. But the guys I have in the top five are, it's hard to, it would be hard to take Russell Wilson and put him inside of it, though he can run the ball as well. Uh, I, don't, I just feel weird after last year. I want to see him prove me different. I have no concerns with him. I just think other players are better. Like, I don't think there's anything bad about Russ, but they're just people that I like more than him. Yeah, I agree. I don't hate it. Yeah, I got him at six. Or no, I have him at seven. Sorry, I have Dak at six. So I'm right outside that top five. He easily could be in that top five again. I wouldn't be shocked at all. I just think the consistency last year kind of scared me a little bit as he got colder down the, down the stretch there while the Seahawks offense was kind of getting figured out. But I'm kind of in the same boat as Q. I want to see what this new offensive coordinator can do to kind of help them out. Um, I think their defense did get a little better, which isn't that great, but I don't think it's – I still think it's one of the, the poorer defenses where Russ is going to have to yeah. throw a ton. So, Russ should be solid, no doubt. He's definitely another middle round guy you guys should be it looking was to target. Seattle, Dallas, and Atlanta like fighting to be the worst defense ever last right. year. Yeah, they were all so bad, and I definitely think the Seahawks aren't going to be that much better. So Russ is still going to have to. Cook. We're going to let Russ cook again. Got to let him cook. All right, one more controversial quarterback aside. This one's probably the most controversial. So allegations aside. What are you doing with Deshaun Watson this year? Are we still just waiting for more news? And if he stays with the Texans, which looks more and more likely every day, they're not trading him. So where are you ranking him? Uh, honestly, if he's on the Texans next year, I'm not ranking him at all because <laughs> chances are he doesn't play a good portion of the season. And then the, after that suspension, he might just hold out the rest of the year. So I don't really have – too much interest in a guy that I personally love, which is, I hate to say it because I wish he was playing this year, but I don't know with everything going on around him, it's just hard to have him rank somewhere where you're comfortable taking it unless it's like very late round. Yeah. I, I think of no new changes leading up to like middle end July, I guess you can consider us the middle or August. Uh, he's not going, he's not getting drafted in the last round. I would, Definitely don't think he lasts that long, but um, if he somehow decides to play, regardless if it's for the Texans or anyone, six to eight game suspension was probably what he'd get from the commissioner if he's innocent. That's like a steal. I mean, we saw we his same team as last year minus Will Fuller. Uh, I would be very surprised if he plays a game for him, but we saw Aaron Rodgers hold out and come back. This might be a completely different story, but I think yeah. he's definitely being drafted before the last round. Yeah. I think for those of you guys that are drafting earlier, I'd probably still just, if you're taking a late round flyer on them at that point, there's still just not enough news out there. Um, But if he stays with the Texans, I still think he would have top five potential, even without Fuller Watson's obviously one of the best quarterbacks, but yeah. And he's still got Brandon cooks there. People forget that they have cooks and cooks Mm -hmm. was decent last year. Yeah, it was definitely solid, especially down the stretch. Started off a little rough. Um, yeah, I think it's just wait for more news on Deshaun Watson. Pretty much is all you can do. And if you can't really wait for more news, don't take an early round pick on Deshaun Watson. Definitely I'll wait. And if someone else takes that risk, let them take that risk. All right. 
uh, combining some of the older quarterbacks together here as we continue down the ranks. Uh, where do you rank Brady, Stafford, and Tannehill heading into this season? And which ones did not crack your top 10 and why? I actually have them all ranked right next to each other. I have Brady at nine, Tannehill at 10, and Stafford at 11. Yeah, Stafford's the only one who didn't make it in the top 10. It's hard to argue just because Brady and his weapons and Tannehill and his new weapon, um, Stafford obviously is on a And very, the weapons that he already had. Yeah, so Stafford's already on – I mean, Stafford is on a good team. There's no denying that. I just – it's hard to argue with what Brady has. He has top 10 players all around or potentially top 10 players all around, and Tannehill has two maybe top five oh, receivers in the league. Yeah. And – maybe the best running back right goes without saying yeah and Tannehill can run the ball if he wants to he is he can be a little mobile as well compared to Stafford who I don't know if I've ever seen him run in the last couple of years and Brady I don't think I want can, to see him run I don't think Brady, I want to see him run he either. might pull something Brady can't even jog probably yeah I could not see Brady run so you guys where do you have these guys ranked okay so I got Jay Herbo at eight I got Brady no, and no, not no. Brady Stafford Tannehill Brady Stafford's it. Doesn't matter. Okay, I got Brady at nine. <laughs> I got Tanny at eleven and Steph at twelve. Okay, and both of them outside top ten. Yeah, but but I'm liking Steph more and more. Like I think he's gonna end up moving up. But right now he's at twelve. And I have Tanny at eleven. And that's because Eric Henry, obviously, and two like injury prone receivers, which AJ had uh surgery on both his knees in the offseason, like and Julio <laughs> keeps getting hurt. And Julio just for some reason cannot score touchdowns. So Tanny's just like I think that was partially like Matt Ryan's fault. Was we'll it see. though? It could was have it been the Falcon scheme. But see, it had been like a, its see. whole career though. Right. Yeah. I mean, we will see, but I mean, just based off that, I mean the only like end zone threat is like AJ Brown. And yeah. that's it. Unless they're handing the ball off. Ferkser. <laughs> no Ferkser. <laughs> we'll get a couple. He'll be wide open, like I said, waving his arms. <laughs> Can we talk about Jay Herbo, though? No, not yet. I got to make my point on Stafford being the best out of these three because I got Stafford at nine, Tannehill at 10, and Brady actually at 11. Brady was a little bit inconsistent for me last year. I think he had like six games with 20 or fewer points, and then the rest of them were actually pretty good games. Um, so he kind of scares me a little bit. I think this team can have like has an elite defense, number one. So if they get up big in the games early – they could easily just rely on Rojo and Leonard Fournette to finish out games. Um, I think Brady's kind of obviously cruising through the end of his career here, although he could play until he's 90 years old for all I know. Um, <laughs> feels like he's been around for way too Peyton long. Peyton Manning said 2035. Yeah, exactly. Peyton Manning predicting another 15 years for Brady. So I would not even be shocked. God, but, um, he'd be so old. <laughs> <laughs> he would be super old. He would be but, playing in a diaper. But – I just don't think he has to do as much as the other guys do to help their teams win. Um, Brady's pretty much in the perfect situation. He has elite wide receivers, a very solid run game, a really good offensive line and a good, I think a really good defense. So I don't think he's going to have to do everything where I think Stafford actually comes into the best situation of his career. I have Stafford at nine and I think he could easily be a top five quarterback this year. Um, if, with the weapons he has with Robert Woods, Cooper cup, not that much of a run game with Cam Akers now out. He's going to have to throw a ton, and their defense is obviously pretty good as well, but I still think Stafford's going to have to do a lot more than Brady will have to. And I like Dan Hill more just because, as you guys mentioned, he, he does have some injury-prone wide receivers, but if they're able to stay healthy, that's a deadly duo. Deadly trio. Deadly trio. Or quite three-headed monster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I think we're splitting hairs here. They're all in the same kind of tier, the late-round QBs that you're you're definitely drafting as your starter there. Um, all right, now we can talk about Jay Herbo, like T-Gods wanted to the whole time. And the young bulls. Lastly, it seems like Justin Herbert is a step above the other sophomore quarterbacks, which are Burrow and Hurts. So where do you have Herbo ranked, and then what are you doing with Joe Burrow and Jalen Hurts, and who do you like more out of those two? Definitely more than a step above all of them. Yeah. He should have been have the number Justin one. Overall Herbert, pick. I have Justin Herbert at six. And then it's not all the way down until twelve and thirteen. I have Burrow Burrow and Hurts. Yeah. Exactly I mean, where I have him. Oh. Yeah. Why do you guys like Burrow so much? 
I like Burrow. Burrow was, I mean, he's going to have to he's throw again a ton. And they just got another young receiver for him to work with. So I just like his weapons a lot. And I think Hurts definitely has a lot better in the uh, advantage in the run game. But I don't know this Eagles offense. I just want to see it before I start getting too excited about it. <laughs> but you don't want to so, see the Bengals offense before you get too excited about it? We got a glimpse of it last year. And, now they and have it to wasn't too Chase. bad. Tyler Boyd was right. top 20 for a while. T. Higgins ended up finishing, I believe, top 20, if not top 25. So, I mean, we know that Burrow can get it done. And we only saw a small sample size of Hurts last year. Yeah. Do you, I think you're all in on Herbo compared to all of us. Where do you have Justin Herbo? I have him at six also. Oh, you just got him at six. Matt's but he's going to finish top three. Jesus. All right. Uh, I I got him at eight, so I might be the most cautious out of all of us, I guess. I have an eight. Um, okay, me and you guys are kind of in the same boat. I think the guy, the seven guys I had ahead of him, feel just like a lot of a like the safe, a little bit more safer, I guess, in my opinion. But Herbert obviously does have the top five potential. Um, top three, pushing it a little bit. No, I'll I give him three in the five. top three. He could be he could be number three, but eh, it's a little risky for me to throw my chips on him just yet. So I have him at eight right ahead of those older guys we just mentioned. But I like Hurts more than Burrow, but I also have them right next to each other as well, 12 and 13. Yeah, Burrow definitely has better weapons than Hurts, but Hurts yeah. is mobile. Yeah, Burrow's Hertz. coming off an ACL injury. And not, not that much of a better O-line as well. So if yeah. Burrow gets a lot of pressure in his face, I think he does struggle a little bit with that. All that's right. like the volume of 60 throws a game. I mean, I don't yeah. know if that's something someone can keep up with, but – yeah. With Mixon back, I think they're going to try and get him a lot of carries too. But of course, I had yeah, to, of course, add I had to throw him in there. there. <laughs> Y'all know Hurts had 350, 354 rushing yards in four games. Yeah, he's going to be a menace. Doing. And one win the show. That's some nice numbers, right? No, it is, it is a nice I'm number. Taking, some of us a hundred a game, dude. I'm-